After the release of Gamera vs. Ziggurat in 1971, the franchise took a long break lasting nearly 10 years. During that time, Dai Studio had recovered from bankruptcy and was producing films again. However, by the early 80s, the studio was falling on hard times once again. Desperate to recuperate some quick cash, it was decided to revive The Flying Turtle with a film made on as minuscule a budget as possible. Director Noriaki Yuasa and screenwriter Nissan Takahashi were brought back, as was Gamera's entire rogues gallery, to craft an epic multi-monster romp of classic Gamera goodness. Unfortunately, the resulting film, titled Gamera Super Monster, is anything but, and despite any good intentions, is instead a momentous failure in nearly every way. A massive spaceship carrying an alien named Xanon arrives at Earth with intentions to enslave the planet with an army of stock footage from Gamera's past. Luckily, a trio of heroic space women residing on Earth sense the oncoming invasion, and together with a Gamera-loving boy named Keiichi, work to stop Xanon's nefarious plans. Also on their side is the friend of all children, Gamera, who takes the fight to the monsters while the space women deal with Xanon's bumbling lackey, Geruge. The best way to describe Gamera Super Monster is inept. Despite being nine years removed from the last entry, it makes no meaningful steps to revive the franchise for a new generation, instead indulging in every bad habit that plagued the worst films in the series. More annoying kids, more space women, more invading aliens with less than bare bones motivations, and oh so much stock footage are what define this movie, and all of it is haphazardly thrown together into an incomprehensibly nonsensical story that is told as cheaply as possible, leaving little in the way of actual entertainment. The single worst thing about Gamera Super Monster is the stock footage. The entire film is structured around the reuse of old sequences, and none of it is implemented with any sense of grace. Every previous foe Gamera has fought makes an appearance here, with practically no explanation or relevance as to anything going on with the plot, which, what little of it there is, is merely the scaffolding holding it all together, an excuse to reuse all the special effects sequences from all the previous films. It gets so bad that at one point it may manages to repeat the same sequence of stock footage from Gamera vs. Virus. Yes, this film has stock footage of stock footage. And yet, the ironic thing is that all the stock footage is a blessing because the original material is terrible. There's almost no story to speak of, and the cast is both small and astoundingly inconsequential to anything that happens. Keiichi, played by Koichi Maeda, isn't the worst this series has offered as far as children go, but he is essentially a carbon copy of Toshio from the original film, and thus brings nothing new to the table. The only other characters of note are Kilara, the leader of the space women, played by Mak Fumiyaki and Garuge, her evil counterpart played by Keiko Kudo, the former standing out for her impressive stature and the latter for her hilariously astounding incompetence. She is a painfully ineffectual villain who fails by literally doing nothing throughout the whole movie, though she is also the most interesting character simply by virtue of having the closest thing to an actual arc, and that's being generous. <laughs> So between half the movie being composed of stock footage and the other half being nothing but inconsequential nonsense, it should be obvious by now that Gamera Super Monster is incredibly cheap. The film isn't able to depict anything exciting on screen that hasn't been made already, including going so far as to use animation from other non-Gamera films. It even blatantly rips off Star Wars, with Xanon's ship looking like a near carbon copy of a Star Destroyer. The editing is so choppy it makes an already confusing narrative even more so, and while the new Gamera song is catchy, it's not nearly as memorable as the original, and is overused way too much. One plus of Gamera Super Monster is that the stock footage is edited down, giving the fights a tighter, faster pace than the originals. And as bad as most of the original special effects are, the flying effects here are decent for the time. And finally, for as terrible as the film is, one could see how it could leave an impression on a really young kid who's never seen a Gamera movie. Through the fresh eyes of a very young and impressionable child, the film can entertain. But once beyond a certain age, you'll just be befuddled. 
Gamera Super Monster is that rare kind of film that has almost no entertainment value. Unless you are a kid who's never seen a Gamera movie, you'll just be bored. The film screens cheap from top to bottom. No attempt is made to establish anything of substance, the characters run around doing nothing of merit, and the stock footage doesn't mesh at all with the new material, making for a very disjointed, nonsensical movie that's insulting even to children. No matter what you're looking for, you'll be disappointed. It's a pitiful end to the original series, and a woefully painful end for the beloved friend of all children. Gamera and the audience deserved better. For more reviews and opinions on all things Gamera, subscribe and stay tuned to Up From The Depths.